continuing. The format for today is more of me speaking than you reading. Last two classes were reading and explanation. But today we will be discussing the chapter known as the forest of material entanglement. So that's the chapter and it has mainly to do with the story and a philosophical part of it. So, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Narayanam Namaskritya Naranjaiva Narutam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudire Nashtapraya Shubhatresu Nityam Bhagavata Shivayam Bhagavate Ruttama Shlokir Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtikim Yashyam Bhah Suryamanayam Krishnair Parama Purushir Bhaktir Utpadate Pumsha Shoka Moha Vayapaha Hare Krishna So there are three categories of people living in this world or there are three different types of activities living in this world people perform. According to Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, makes it very simple. So these three types of activities are known as the activities of karma, the activity of akarma, and activity of vikarma. Karma, Akarma, and Vikarma. Now, activities that produce the good results are called the Karma. Yes? The activities that produce the bad results are called the Vikarma. Vikarma. And activities that neither produce good or bad are called akarma. So most of the time, most of the population of the world is engaged in activities called the bikarmas. Bikarma means a forbidden action. That action it is, which is explained by the scriptures not to do it. Don't do it. So most of the population perform in those type of activities. Why? The topic of today is when Maharaj Jadhvarat and Rahugan were discussing Jadhvarat, who at this point is a guru, spiritual master of Maharaj Rahugan, Jadhvarat by birth, born in a Brahmin family, but he was jad. What a jad means? Just like in Hindi or Sanskrit, when we say jad, what does it mean? Static mood. Sorry, Static something static. that is not movable, <coughs> or something that is indifferent. Indifferent. So him, jad Bharat, he was not jad in a sense of being non-movable, but rather in the sense of non-difference. So he was not different to a reality of this world. He did not care about what people thought of him. He did not care to act in a such way that satisfied people. Or he was not reacting to anything that was happening around him. So in that sense, non-different Jan Bharat. <coughs> but That is a saying, when an intelligent person keeps quiet thinking that there is no point of talking to a foolish man, that is a win for a foolish man. Say a you know, self-realized soul or a devotee or intelligent person realizes, well this guy is useless talking to. Okay. He is completely drunk. Anything that I say is not going to make any difference. 
So therefore, a selfie life soul will keep quiet now. Yes? Now, just because he kept quiet, what does the foolish person think? That I have won. Because I kept him quiet. Do you understand the logic? Yes. Do you not have It looks like either you have understood the deep meaning or you have not understood anything yet. So, the silence in the part of the wise man is actually a gain for the unwise. So this is the sensual judgment. He saw that everyone were very much impelled to a sense gratification and everyone were acting wrongly. So therefore he kept quiet. I have nothing to do with you. So everyone thought that this guy is useless. But now, <coughs> finding Maharaj Rahukan, he thought, now this is a time to open a mouth because he is very wise. First thing he said was, you speak like a wise man, but your speech is unwise. Yes? Position of a guru. What does the guru does first? Chastise. Chastise. The duty of a parent doesn't begin with the flatter. You don't start with the flatter. It's like the success in good family life is that don't say anything when things are going right. You didn't have to say anything. For good things, just keep quiet, everything is fine. But when something goes wrong, chastise there. This is the key of success. And the Lord does the same thing. And in Bhagavad Gita, when Arjun says, Shishya Shem Sadi Mantam Prapannam, Oh my dear Lord, I am your disciple, now soul surrender unto you. Please instruct me. What did Krishna do? What is the first speech he spoke? You know? He says, Asuschanam Vaso Chastam, Pragyam Bada Savasa Sehe, Gata Asuna Gata Asuncha, Nanu So Chanti Pantita. He says, When speaking learned word, you are mourning for something which is not worth of grief. Or you speak like a learned man, but your speech is unwise, unlearned. Or your speech and your thought don't match. So therefore, my dear Arjun, you are a fool. So, if the disciple is ready to accept this, then he is a good, good disciple. If first thing Krishna said you are a fool, then he does everything to defend himself from Krishna. Or a spiritual master means he is not ready yet. Yes, if somebody says, Daddy, please help me out, please help me out. The child goes to Daddy and says, please help me out. The Daddy says, maybe the child needs help. So he goes and says, can I just have your pen? I want to just tell you what to do. Then as soon as the daddy begins to write something to teach the child because he's confused, then the child says, no daddy, you don't, no, give me the pen back. First thing the child surrendered, the daddy agrees to teach, then child begins to teach, teach daddy again. So this is not surrender. With a spiritual master, in any level, even if the spiritual master says, you know what, you are a fool. Yes, I am a fool, therefore I am in the class today. I am to learn something. So it's attitude of learning. So same thing Maharaj Raugan. He said, My dear King, you look very learned, but you are not free from the concept of Dehatma Buddhi. You know what does Dehatma Buddhi means? Deha means? The body. Atma means? The soul. Buddhi means? The intelligent. Accepting the body to be the self. The intelligent which accepts the body as a self is called the Atma Buddhi. Or in one word, <coughs> thinking that soul simply because the soul has accepted a body, the soul has become the body. And now the entire judgment is based on the body, not based in the soul. Yes? So thinking the driver to be the car just because he resides inside the car, is it wise? Wise judgment? Who is the driver? Driver is different from the mechanical thing, the car? It's always different. But those people who concept in English, in Sanskrit they call the Dehatma Buddhi, and in English they say bodily concept of life. 
or accepting the body to be the self. He said, my dear king, you have not even come out from that position yet. Why? Because all these different aspects in life, the form of a king, the form of the you know, messengers, the form of the servants, and form of the citizens, these are all covered, the soul being covered by the body. But in reality, everyone has a soul which is spiritual. Yes? As good as God. When we say as good as God, Prabhupada always says remember, in quality, not in quantity. Okay. As good as God, but being covered by the body, which is the outcome of matter. Now instead of understanding that I am actually being covered by the matter, people feel that it's not being covered by the matter, I am such, I am matter. So this is the main problem. Now, the first part I said was, the three way of performing activities are what? Karma, akarma and vikarma. So in order to pacify the body which covers the soul, after all, people think that the activities acquired by using the material body would make the material body happy because they already have the concept wrong. So they think that material things are going to make me happy. So now, happiness becomes the key. Everyone wants to become happy. Now sometimes people deny the happiness by rejecting or going against the scriptures. Because happiness. Sometimes following the scriptures may deride you of the happiness. Such as getting up early in the morning. The Shastra says get up early in the morning. But unless you sleep up to 9 o'clock, you don't feel good. So therefore, reject that code of the scriptures. There is no problem sleeping up to 9 o'clock. So now, yes, Shastra Vidhimu Sirchet, Krishna says, they begin to reject the Vedic scriptures and act whimsically. The scripture says, tonic meat. Yes, but what happened to the, my taste? So just to satisfy the taste of the tongue, we reject the scriptures. The Shastra said, Asat Sangatyag, reject the association of non-devotees. Yes, now if I reject the association of non-devotees, where am I going to get the pleasure from? So therefore reject, I can associate with anyone, any drunkards, anyone, and be happy. So. Some people reject the Vedic scriptures in order to become happy and they engage themselves in activity called the Bikarma. And some people are fearful of the consequence. People say, Karma. What goes around comes around. Every action there is reaction. Yes? So accepting this, people say that I don't want a bad reaction to my own activities. So therefore, I want sense gratification, but avoiding the bad reaction of it. So therefore, in order to fulfill the sense gratification, people engage themselves in religious activities. Or, in other words, going to the temple in the form or with the concept of, I can be free from papam, and not get a reaction of sinful activities that I am doing. Or going to the church, all day you commit a sin and one day you go in front of the priest and say, you say that, oh priest, I have committed a sin last week. Please forgive me for that sin. So go back and start sinning again. So basically forgive me for the last week's sin, but I commit sin this week again. So this is called the concept of using the Vedic scriptures in order to acquire sense gratification. So at least it is better than the first one. Isn't it? Avoid the Vedic scriptures in order to enjoy sense gratification is the first one and accept the Vedic scripture in order to enjoy the sense gratification the second one. But what is the common on both? Sense gratification. And in order to enjoy sense gratification, what is needed there? Existence is required. So in both conditions, either you follow the Vedic scriptures or you avoid the Vedic scriptures. But you will be impelled 
to taking birth again. Just like if you do a good work, the result of good work is what? The result of good work is what? Benefits. Benefits? So do you need a life to enjoy the benefits? Yes. Yes. So therefore to enjoy the benefit, what do you need? Rebirth. Rebirth. You see, although this is, this is karma, concept of karma. Even to enjoy the good result of your action, you need a rebirth. And what is the problem here? And rebirth means, if you have good result means you have a good birth. And those people who have a better birth have natural tendency of judging a people with bad birth. Or people with a good birth will use the people of bad birth in order to acquire sense gratification. Yes? Just like in India, those people who have a lot of money and everything else, they have like a das in the kitchen, they have a servant in the garage, they have a servant here, they have a servant there. So again, brings the cycle of sense gratification and using another living entity for your sense pleasure. And devotional service means allowing every living entity to engage in devotional service and not depending in any living entities for sense gratification. That is devotional service. Only one person you depend on. Who? Krishna. Nobody else. And in sense gratification you are depending on everyone else. Somebody else's sadness becomes your Oh, he is so lucky that he became a doctor. Yes? And doctor goes, unless the patients go to the doctor, where is the doctor going to make a money from? So therefore, doctor says, oh God, yes, I'm so fortunate, but make sure you make some people, you know, so sick that they come to me and they have high bills. Although, it's a good birth, but you exploit somebody of a lower birth in order to achieve your accomplishments. So this is called karma. Yes? Is it safe? You are still confused? No, it's clear. It's not safe. For any condition you need a body. So therefore Krishna says reject the karma also. A, you know, some, you know, most of the people have this misconception of karma de eva di karashat ma phale sukadachana ma karma phale he turgur ma te sangvita karma hi. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, how many people know this karma nivadi karasya? How many of us? I would say 95% of the people who are born in India and who the parents say, no, Sanskrit slokas you should memorize. If they know any Sanskrit, they know two slokas. Karma nivadi karasya, ma phale is to get ajana, ma karma phale he turbur, ma te sangvita karma ni, or sarvapan parityaja, ma ne ka sarvam raja, am tam sarvapapetya, moksha isya vimashu. This is known by everyone. If you begin to learn Sanskrit, this comes to two. Yes? So normally people say, karma, karma, karma. But Krishna is talking about the karma very specifically here. And that's what Maharaj Raghugan is talking about. I thought, instead of reading the slokas, I'm going to bring it to the, you know, wet cloth and just squeeze it out now. Otherwise you might just be confused somewhere else. So, what Maharaj Raghugan has been accused here is that, my dear king, you are engaging yourself into good activities. Yes, you are doing the Sadhu Sangha, but in order to maintain your supremacy as being a king, who are you using? Who? The carriers. Yes? You are using them. You are taking the service of them. Either you might be doing good or bad with them, that's a different story. If you are doing bad, then you get what? You get karma or bikarma? Bikarma. You get bikarma. Now if you are doing good with them, then you get karma. But the common thing is sense gratification. And for sense gratification, you require another part. You are still not engaging yourself in an activity which frees you from this material body. You are engaging yourself in an activity that gives you another body, therefore you are not smart. Now, Say, entire society, especially, you will find it will be easier for us to communicate in a sense. In India, we are mostly attached to dharma somewhere in the corner. Somewhere in the corner, we are attached to dharma. Yes? Most of the time, it is a pitri dharma that we have. 
you know, it's my duty to follow my father because he's elderly, which is beautiful, which is nice. There is no problem on that. Or it is my duty to follow my mother. Or it is my duty to make my father and mother happy. Yes? So, you know, according to my culture, when we are married, we have to be together and we have to just make whole children happy and be united. This is my dharma. So 95% of the time, whatever we do is going to be based on dharma. But our dharma, we, too much, we focus too much into society. There is called a naimitik dharma and nitya dharma. Your constitutional position and your conditional position. Our conditional position is the dharma that we are talking about. Of what my father says, what my mother, mother says, what this says, what that says. So, it's never going to be free. Never going to bring any way to the freedom. Just like dharma will change according to the time and circumstance. When you are up to five, what is your dharma? Say, when you are a child up to five years of age, what is our dharma then? Hmm? Just play and eat what you get from parents. That's the dharma that we are bound to. And once you become five, above five, then dharma adds up. You don't you know, demand too much respect from the young you know, children from under five. But after that, uncle comes, hey, Hare Krishna, Namaskar, Bolo, to go. Something adds up now as the time goes. Or dharma becomes, what? Education, studies, homework, hey, tumara dharma ek hi hai. My dharma is work. Your dharma is? Homework, but both are work. So there is a sloka. Vidya Mitra Pravasesu, Mata Mitram Griyesucha, Vedi Tasya Mitra Dharma, Mirta 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 Shishama. Vidya Mitra Pravasesu. So, who is the greatest friend of Sisu? Sisu means a kid child. Who is the greatest friend? Mother. Vidya Mitra Pravasesu. And who is the greatest friend for people who go to college? The greatest friend. Your room partner or knowledge? If you are studying, what is the greatest friend? Knowledge. Okay, Vidya Mitra. Then Prabha, Sesu. For the Sesu, it is Mother Prabha. Mata Mitra. Yes, Mata Mitra, Grihya Sucha, if he is at the house, mother is the greatest friend. Mata Mitra, Grihya Sucha, Vedita Shiva Mitra Dharma. And who is the greatest friend of a person who is sick? Doctor. The doctor. Your dharma is changing now. You see, based on what position you are in. Vedita Shiva Mitra Dharma. And for the person who is dying, who is the greatest friend? Now, if you, if you are just sick, doctor. But now it is destined that you are dying. Who is the greatest friend? Dharma. Dharma means devotion. If you are destined to die, the best friend of yours is devotion. Vedita Samitra Dharma. Mritta Mritta. Mritta Shichaha. And once you die, what is the best friend? The piety. So the dharma will change according to different timings. So therefore, if we have just our regular dharma that we accept and we don't focus into the nitya dharma, the constitutional position, then it will be changing at every point. Okay? The duty of a son is to look after the father. The duty of the husband is to look after the wife. The duty of the father is to look after the children and duty of the children is to follow the parents. So this is the dharma. But these positions are changing all the time also. Today's child becomes tomorrow the father. Isn't it? Tomorrow's father is going to be a grandfather. So his dharma is going to change again. So how many times are we going to change the dharma as the life goes? You understand? And as you give up the life, what is the dharma of the prisoner? Just be good as you are in prison. 
So it doesn't matter where you are, dharma is going to change. So therefore, what is the real dharma? That's what he is trying to focus. That you know, you are trying to focus so much into your occupational duties of regular dharmas that my dear king, you are actually forgetting the main dharma. And what is the main dharma? Nihaya karma dharmaya navaira geyat kalpate natirtha pada sevayam jivan apya mirtu hishaha The devotional service onto the Supreme Personality of God is the final dharma. That will never change. Doesn't matter how old you are. If you are chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra at the age of five, what is your dharma as you become 55? Same thing. It doesn't change. Our relationship with God has never changed in any position. Our relationship with Krishna has never changed, will never change. It will always remain the same. But every other types of dharma will change. Now, what is important? To focus into a dharma that is never changeable or dharma that is changing every step. I guess you have to keep both. No, no, I am not saying reject anything. <laughs> I am not saying reject anything. Mm -hmm. It's not a question of rejecting, but what is more important, that's what I am saying. Yeah, the constitutional dharma. Your constitutional dharma is more. But most of the time, we give up the constitutional dharma to accept conventional dharma. Condition. That is the problem right there. So we forget to do that. And what is the cause? It's like, you know, oh, you know, I need to get to my office quickly. People don't want to give up the sleep, but they will give up their morning, morning prayers. Sleeping time is no problem. I get up at 5 o'clock every day. It must be 5. But from 5.30 to 6 o'clock, I used to chant. Let me just remove the chanting and leave at 5.30. So we sacrifice our constitutional position, but we do engage. But sometimes people forget the constitutional position as well as the normal position. And they being, belong nowhere. And they get engaged into the karma. That is also very common. But however, just like what happened in the case of the hunter, Mrigari. You know the story of Mrigari? Mrigari was a hunter. He used to hunt in the forest. So one day, Naradhuni, he comes to the hunter and he says, what's your duty, what do you do? He says, I'm a butcher, I kill animals in the forest. He said, you know what, there is a reaction to that because you are actually depriving somebody else from having their life. And you have to suffer the reaction for that, do you know that? And he said, yeah, but I'm not doing for myself. I'm doing for my families. Again, everyone does for family. I do for my family, everyone does for family. And he said, but the question remains, there is a reaction to it. Who is going to suffer that? Is it going to be collective or specific? Just because, say that you stole the money from the bank. Okay? But you distributed your family members, but no one knows how the money came. When the investigation comes through, they realize that you stole from the bank, and others you took for the party to the restaurant. When the cops come to catch 